Greetings from Church Street United Methodist Church in downtown Knoxville, Tennessee. We are Anna and Lucy Cooper, members at Church Street, and on behalf of our church family, we'd like to welcome you to our online worship service. Today, we are out in the stairwell outside of the choir room on our favorite bench. This is where we socialize with our friends and greet the parish adult choir before they serve in the 11 o'clock service. If you've been here, you know it's a special space. If you haven't, I hope we can share it with you soon in person. If you're new to Church Street, we'd love to connect with you. Please visit us online at churchstreetumc.org to fill out a connect card, and we will reach out to you in the way that suits you best. If you're already connected to Church Street, thanks so much for spending time in the worship with us today. Let us worship Almighty God together. Will you join me in our opening prayer? Redeeming God, you satisfy our soul's hunger through Jesus Christ, the bread of life. Filled with your steadfast love, let us live in love, working honestly to share with the needy, feeding others with the bread of kindness, tenderness, and forgiveness. Amen. Please join me as we sing our opening hymn, God Whose Love is Reigned O'er Us.
good morning. I'd like to invite all the children to gather up, get comfy, and listen up. So a couple weeks ago, we heard the story about Jesus feeding this large group of people. We hear 5,000, 3,000, but it was a ton of people. And he fed them with a small amount of food from this little boy's lunch. Well, people heard about it, and more people came, and some people, I bet, came because they were expecting to get food. How many of us have gone to an event that we weren't sure about, but we were offered a free meal or cookies or ice cream? And so we go, we, we gather around a table as celebrations or different offerings, and it gets people to come. And so that was happening there. But in today's scripture, Jesus also says that he's the bread of life. And that's sometimes hard to understand. And what that means is really... Yes, Jesus cared about our human needs, our need for food, but he cared even more about our hearts. And so when Jesus said that he was the bread of life, that means that he cared and loved us so much that he wanted to come down and be the person to where we can learn from him, learn how to love others, learn how to love God, um, and cared about what was on our hearts more than what was in our bellies. And so throughout this week, I just challenge each and every one of you to remember that God and Jesus loved us so much that they did come down and that they loved us because they cared about what's in our hearts and that we can show the world that same love by our actions. So throughout this week, try to do something for one person every day that shows them that you care about them the way Jesus cares about them. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this reminder that you cared about our hearts being empty and that you came to fill them back up. And we just ask that we can remember that throughout this week. Amen. We've come to that time in our worship service where we focus our hearts and minds on offering back to God from the great abundance that God has first given us. Notice all the ways that you can give to the church to support our ministries and to share with the world from the abundance of God's blessings that God has shared with us as a Church Street family.
Good morning. My name is Dr. Chris Sneed, Assistant Professor and Consumer Economics Specialist for the University of Tennessee Extension. We will be reading from the sixth chapter of John today, and in this chapter, Jesus refers to himself as the bread of life. I am honored to lead a multidisciplinary team as we do research and outreach to end hunger, specifically in Tennessee, and I seek to offer bread through my outreach work with Smokey's Pantry on campus and emergency food assistance programs across our state. Will you join me in our prayer for illumination? Gracious God, we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from your mouth. Make us hungry for this heavenly food, that it may nourish us today in the ways of eternal life, through Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Our scripture reading is from John 6, verses 35, 41 through 51. Hear now the word of the Lord. Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Jewish opposition grumbled about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They ask, isn't this Jesus, Joseph's son, whose mother and father we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus responded, do not grumble among yourselves. No one can come to me unless they are drawn to me by the Father who sent me, and I will raise them up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has listened to the Father and learned from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. I assure you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that whoever eats from it will never die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? This is a prayer I use often before our Thursday meal at Soup Kitchen. Be present in our worship, Lord. Be here and everywhere adored. Thy mercies bless and grant that we may feast in paradise with thee. Amen. Another week in John chapter 6, another scripture passage about bread. If today's scripture seems a bit repetitive to you, that's because it is. In spending these last two weeks reading from the sixth chapter of the Gospel of John, we've overheard Jesus say, I am the bread of life. Last week, we eavesdropped on his conversation with members of the crowd. This week, we are standing in the midst of religious leaders asking their own series of questions. In picking up the story from last week, Jesus continues teaching the members of the crowd. I am the bread of life, he says. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I told you that you have seen me and still don't believe. Everyone whom the Father gives to me will come to me, and I won't send away anyone who comes to me. I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but the will of him who sent me. Jesus stands in the midst of the crowd teaching. The crowd that chased him across the lake. The same crowd who wanted to force him to be their king. But as Jesus is teaching, the gospel writer John turns our focus from the crowd to a few select members. 
the Jewish opposition. Really, the religious leaders are grumbling over in the corner. Can you see them standing there? Their brows pulled together in consternation, arms crossed in bewilderment over this country carpenter who has captivated the attention of the audience. Leaning together, they whisper questions of confusion, trying to place this cryptic teacher. Isn't this Jesus, Joseph's son, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? We can imagine them sharing stories to connect this teacher with the Jesus of Nazareth they've heard tell of. It's easy to paint this grumbling group in a negative light. Their questions seem passive aggressive, fueled by jealousy over a teacher able to connect with such a large crowd. Jesus even tells them not to grumble amongst themselves. But these guys get a bad rap. They are asking some very pertinent questions. Isn't this Jesus, the son of Joseph the carpenter, whom we watched grow up from a precocious boy? We know he was born in Bethlehem during that census, so why does he now say, I have come down from heaven? The ordinary man they have probably conversed with is now, maybe in their minds, misleading this crowd. We're quick to judge them as naysayers, but they've got some relevant questions. As readers and eavesdroppers, we get a fuller picture of the story. We know that Jesus is the bread of life come down from heaven. We know how he is reconciling all creation to his Father God and is the bread that satisfies all. But if we were in the shoes of the religious leaders, would we be able to recognize God's divine gift of Jesus in what appears to be an ordinary man? It really is powerful that Jesus compares himself to bread. Bread is ordinary. And when you go to a restaurant, the bread basket is not the highlight of the meal. Breadsticks, sandwich bread, cornbread, dinner rolls, hamburger buns, pretzels, bagels, all very delicious in their own way. But the excitement of a BLT is the bacon, not the bread that sandwiches it. Bread can be exciting, I'll give it that. If you remember Oprah's Weight Watchers commercials, she was excited enough for all of us over the possibility of eating bread. But bread is still ordinary. You bring together basic everyday ingredients to make a part of the meal that usually doesn't even have space on the main part of our plate. Bread is not a very exciting thing for Jesus to compare himself with. Now that you are all sufficiently hungry, I'm going to keep preaching. So if you need to pause and get a snack, I completely understand. All this talk about bread makes me hungry too. My friend Elaine is an amazing baker, especially when it comes to bread. Whenever our friend group gets together for dinner, she is always tasked with ba bringing baked goods. Whether it's rolls, focaccia, or the buns for our barbecue, Lane amazes us each time with the way her use of simple ingredients results in a delicious carb. It seems like a humble addition to the table. But if you've ever baked bread, 
you know the amount of work it requires. Certain breads call for specialty flours. Salt is necessary for the dough, but it cannot touch the yeast. The bread must rise for a particular amount of time, and the temperature of the room must be ideal or your bread will not bake properly. It is quite tedious work to develop an ordinary loaf of bread. But whenever Lane uncovers her dish of bread, I see a gift of love and friendship. In each crumb is a willingness to take the time to develop those simple ingredients. An ordinary offering that reveals a loving gift in her time, attention, and care. Each of the lay leaders who have led us in prayer and scripture this month have brought forth similar offerings. All of the different person, people in both online and in-person worship who have read this month offer the bread of Christ in some way. Then there are numerous more persons in our church who offer the ordinary gift of bread on behalf of our church and in the name of Christ. Susan Folks organizes the meals for our church's days with Family Promise, making sure homeless families have a satisfying dinner while working through the Family Promise housing program. Hannah Blake teaches people the important skill of baking through her YouTube channel. Teresa Childs organizes the food distribution for food co-op at the Beacon of Hope, whether that means labeling donated canned goods or placing an order with Second Harvest Food Bank. Dan Kelly then goes to pick up that order on the Tuesday afternoon before food co-op and Hopi Carlson, Donna Bunch, and members of the co-op help unpack that delivery. With Dan and numerous others, Kimberly Wonderlick makes filling lunches for our soup kitchen guests and scoops countless bowls of the hot entree. But when you need emergency food or something to supplement what you can purchase yourself, Members of our congregation, like David Walker, volunteer with Fish Pantry. Or Chris Sneed, who read our scripture today, makes sure that UT students have access to food items through Smokey's Pantry on campus. And Beth Stubbs, through the program Food for Kids, helps pack weekend bags for children in our community who may not have enough food at home. Dan Armstrong has helped serve breakfast to our youth when they go to Sunday school. Then Cindy Hollingsworth has helped coordinate their Sunday night dinner. Katie Heatherly is now coordinating dinners for our children on Sunday evenings so they are well fed before choir. And Trent. And the members of the Altar Guild prepare the communion table with bread and juice before we engage in the Holy Sacrament. I wish I could name every person who offers bread in the name of Christ on behalf of our church, but it would take hours. Each person is engaging in service of God by offering their ordinary gifts. Many describe what they do in very ordinary ways, yet their actions reveal how Jesus is the bread that came down from heaven. Jesus is the bread of life that came down from heaven. Jesus chose to compare himself to bread, something that appears boring but sustains us. Food is actually one of the most common metaphors in scripture. The Bible is basically a colossal grocery store when it comes to understanding God. And so Jesus chooses the unremarkable and plain, average, 
and abundant. Jesus compares himself to bread. In the feeding of the 5,000, the miracle the crowd and religious leaders recently have witnessed, Jesus takes an ordinary gift, barley bread, and multiplies it through his miraculous power. Everyone ate their fill with baskets left over. Jesus, the divine gift of God's own son, is fully divine in his own right and ordinary in being fully human. The I am sayings hold our focus on a person who seems and is very human. He came from heaven to be bread for the world, bread that is blessed, broken, and shared that all will be filled. He is our daily bread. God draws us in and reveals Jesus that in him, we might experience eternal life. Jesus is the ordinary bread that gifts humanity with eternal life. He is the living bread that comes down from heaven. And because Jesus is the bread of life, our ordinary bread reminds us of more. If you struggle to connect the worship of Sunday morning to the seemingly mundane actions of the rest of the week, liturgy of the ordinary, sacred, sacred practices in everyday life by Tish Harrison Warren would be a good read for you. Warren connects the most mindless parts of our day, brushing teeth, checking email, sitting in traffic, with devotional reminders of God's presence. In her chapter on eating leftover taco soup, she highlights word and sacrament and overlooked nutrition, nourishment. It is her words here that have nourished me. And both word and sacrament are gifts given by Jesus, who calls himself the bread of life. The word of God and the meal of God's people are intended to point to and make manifest the presence of Christ, who is both the word and the bread. In John 6, Jesus reminds his listeners that they received manna, their daily bread, as a gift from the Father, but that it is not enough to nourish them spiritually. They still died. But Jesus promises that those who eat the bread from heaven will be eternally nourished and will not die. Christ is our bread and gives us bread. He is the gift and the giver. God gives us every meal we eat, and every meal we eat is ultimately partial and inadequate, pointing to him who is our true food, our eternal nourishment. May Jesus, the giver of ordinary bread, reveal to us how he himself is the bread of life. Amen. In our worship, we receive God's word and are given the privilege to respond to God by affirming our faith. Today, we use a statement of faith of the United Church of Canada. Will you join me in accepting God's gift of the bread of life by declaring our faith together? We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating. We, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, and who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. 
We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, who comes to us in both the mysterious and the ordinary, nurture us this day by your grace. Help us to trust in your promises to draw us out of our sin and into abundant life with you. Hear us this morning as we boldly lift our hearts in prayer to you, O God, who invites us to be sustained by your grace. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. May the world encounter in your body the church, your life-giving grace that sustains the hungry and refreshes the thirsty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. Guide us by the Holy Spirit that we might live as Jesus offering ourselves for the sake of others and in obedience to Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Have compassion, O God, on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. We pray especially for those who are hospitalized, those who suffer in silence, for those whose grief endures after much time, and for those who feel abandoned by all hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give, O God, to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into your joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and for those of others close to us. Let us be assured and encouraged by the words of Christ that in him we are given life and hope. May he indeed be for us the bread of heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray that prayer that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hear these words of benediction. May the ordinary daily bread you receive fix your gaze on the divine gift of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.